Here we are today in the plush surroundings of the Rinse FM studio, and I'm about to have a chat with a man who remembers it from its humble beginnings. I'm gonna have a chat today with DJ Slimzy. Right, uh, welcome back to Rinse FM. Slim, <laughs> big up for uh, Easy, passing mate. through. That's cool. So, uh, a few weeks ago we had a little chat with D-Double and a lot of people were saying, oh, we really need to get Slimzy in for a chat. And yeah. I thought that it would be a really good idea to get you yeah. in. So I thought we'd just kick things off really and talk about how you got into DJing in the first place. Well, roughly, uh, it was about, uh, what year was it? I was about 13, well, I can't remember the year now, it was like 19, oh, it was about 1982. I just used to go for my doll, just to all the pipe radio stations, like Cool Rush, Deflection, and then I wanted, I wanted to be like a DJ, like, like them, mm. do you know what I mean? Like I was listening every week, every night, Listen to him. I uh, first started playing drum and bass. Like I know hard quite was 1992. Then uh, I was buying that for a few years, just bedroom DJ really. And uh, then I started buying drum and bass jungle early '94. Like and I started going up playing that for a few years. Then I started like playing garage '96 when we started like rinse. Yeah. So you. You had mentioned there that you like actually when you like actually started Rinse FM, you were one of the first people yeah. to actually play on the station. That, what do you remember about the first time you ever played on Rinse back then? First time it was in a tall block, Ingram Ass. Uh, it was on the 18th floor. It was in some boy called Stuart's Ass. <laughs> we just put it in the kitchen, put the air on the roof. No, it was out the window as it goes. <laughs> it was out the back of the window on top of a TV aerial and there was a motorbike in the room as well, a bit weird like uh, and then we just started DJing sort of thing and then calling DJs up who we knew, started playing all weekend and started going on. So back then when you started Rinse and you, you were playing like jungle, hardcore, that kind of stuff, yeah. how, how did you go from that to forming Pay As You Go Cartel? Well, like, my mate like, used to listen to a station called Magic FM, Mega, uh, Mega Math, Gary, you know Gary? Yeah, yeah. He used to work for Static Media. Um, he used to say this, like, uh, like a lyric, and it had Pay As You Go Mix or something, something like that. And then I thought, Pay As You Go, I know it's like a phone. I thought, just call it a crew, Pay As You Go. So like, I, was, I thought of the name, and then it was like me, Plague, and Major Ace. And then I just said, let's quit pay as you go. So I doing that for a few Sundays on rinse and then people started picking up on it. And then people were talking about it all from different South London, East London, North London, West London. And people were talking about it, do you know what I mean? And yeah. it picked up from there and it started getting bigger. So it started off just you, Plague and Major Race. How did yeah. you get like Genius, Target, well, Wiley? Me and G people? was like really best mates for years since 16. Um, Target was always on the station rinse um, and we knew him from like the crew what he's in before SS crew when he was younger with Wiley and all his crew um, yeah, I knew G from a few like, I knew him from Pressure FM which was 100.4 what used to be the old rinse frequency yeah I met him on there then we went on to another station no then we started rinse when we got booted off there when G started making tunes, was he going into the studio knowing that, right, I need to make an instrumental for the MCs? Was it more of a radio yeah, thing was, or was it like, let's yeah, get them? Record? It was more of a, like, he wanted me to play the beat so I could play it for the MCs. Yeah. And then he was making tunes and I played at Battle of the Stations. Have you heard that before? Yeah, I remember that. I played there, me, Sawest, and G played down there. And we was down there, we played for Rinse FM, I think we won it as it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I played the tune there, it was, it was his first tune, it was alright, you know what I mean? I've still got it, so... Do you look after your dubs, you still got them all? Yeah, yeah. They must be worth a few quid now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in bad condition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my memory of you on Rinse, um, and my the first sort of times I used to listen to Rinse, yeah. you was really the first guy to come out of that, like, you know when Garage started getting a bit dark, yeah. things were going, some people were like started to play a bit, like the dubstepy stuff, like yeah. the DLB, early, late garage yeah. kind of stuff, early dubstep, late garage. Um, you were playing like this newer kind of sound that was coming through, like the young producers were making people well, like, like the eight G, bar stuff. The eight bar stuff, exactly. Yeah. 
Did you know at the time that what you were cutting and what you were playing was going to kickstart a whole new genre? Ah, I just started cutting loads of stuff, what I liked, stuff for the MC to ride on yeah. a mic. Uh, I played it. I played for them really, just to, and then I so said I liked it. It was all for the MCs really. But I was playing some eight bar stuff, playing some Johnny Cash stuff, Genius, Wizbit, Trend, Agent X, I and all them. Yeah, yeah and, all, and then it's funny because they was all from East London as well. And then like, they was like the biggest, like, well they was like big um, producers in the grime scene, weren't they? Yeah, big time. They kind of kick-started the whole thing. Yeah. But at the time, it wasn't even, it didn't have a name. It was just still nah. garaged with yeah, old yeah, yeah. people. I just used to play like all the dark stuff. I don't know why, but I just preferred it. And it was yeah. back then as well, actually, thinking about it. We had a queue in for a chat last week and he was he was from up north from Huddersfield. Yeah. And he used to listen to all the tape packs and you were one of the key DJs of that oh, yeah. sort of tape yeah. pack movement. Like, did, was how he did from you... Sidewinder? Yeah, it was a Sidewinder tape pack. Yeah, me and Dizzy sort of done a tape. We we done a Mike Lambert. Told He said he'd pay us like 200 quid each. Just do a tape. You DJ, you MC. I thought, well, that's, a, that's quite a lot of money, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we just done it. I got Dizzy to do it. Or I got Wiley to do it a few times. And then we just done it. Um, we done it around Dizzy's manager's studio called Nick Denton. Cage, they call him. Yeah. And then we just done it in there. We done, it was like a rough studio mix, really. It wasn't like, like fancy or nothing. It was just a rough, like, it wasn't, it wasn't even loud, really. It was like a radio mix. Yeah, it's it? like a radio mix, yeah. It was all raw. Do you but know that, what I mean? That's become one of the most iconic mixes yeah. for like grime. If you want to show someone what, what did grime sound yeah. like when it first started, That's it. that was it. That. Yeah. So everything starts kicking off, grime's blowing up. Yeah. You're like the spearhead of the grime scene as a DJ, yeah. playing headlining sidewinders, winning awards, all that sort of thing. And then Rinse started to blow up as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Started to really pick up. But you got hit with the band. I, I would, you couldn't go up on the old. Uh, yeah, on the, the blocks. Band. Yeah, I was doing that for a few years, and I got caught. Um, I got caught sort of thing. I couldn't go up on the roof. Did they on, actually catch you on the roof? Nah, it was sank in the council. Some of the council geezers knew me, and they said, "Oh, I know him. I went to school with him." You know what I mean? So that's how they got me. Pointed you out. Yeah, they. Well, what it was, we was on the block, and they was trying to get us. I was trying to get through for ages, do you know what I mean? But they put these little cameras and the little um, light switches and like, I found it one day. I thought, look, there's a little hole there. And I, I put a bit of tape over it and then left it. And then I didn't know, realise I had my face looking at me, doing oh, yeah. it, you know what I mean? And then... Is that what came up in evidence? Yeah, there's a picture oh. of me and Sterling. He had a hat on and it was me there like that, you know what I mean? And so, um. When that happened, you were hit with the radio ban. Yeah. And you couldn't do radio no more. Not really. I was still trying to go on the roost, but it was bad. Like, I had to pay a fine and I couldn't go above no fourth story block. If I got caught, they would have sent me straight to jail. Mm. So I didn't know whether to do it or not, or not do it. So I just, after that, I couldn't do it for a little while. So I just had to just, like, I didn't need a station, but. I just couldn't do that, you know what I mean? Um, so you actually released my first ever release on, yeah. the, on your label, Slim's yeah. Us. Uh, do you want to talk us through uh, the label a little bit? Like, I mean, the first the first release was a funny one, wasn't it? Because it yeah. <laughs> was a mix up with Bionics, and Capsule Heinze. and Heinz D, Target. I just, I liked the tune, I had it on dub plate. I think EZ was playing it as well. I thought, bring it out. Sold the fans in the first week. And then Heinz D got in contact and said, oh, I've oh, got to sort this out. <laughs> and I didn't realise it was his tune and it all went all pear-shaped. But I just, I, I, put, I give all the tunes back. And I, no, I, mean, I didn't earn no money from it, yeah, I think. Yeah. I just put it out. So whoever's got the white label of that was lucky. I've got one. <laughs> I know I've got one. I've got one dub, but it's lucky it's a nice white label that was. Yeah. But um, you were saying to me on the phone the other week that you're going to be starting Slim's Os back up again. Yeah, yeah. Week. I'm starting label back up this year. I think I got a tune called called Road Runner or Ray, oh, something like that. It's a bit like a trappy tune sort oh, of right, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's quite a good tune. You know what I mean? Like that Spyro Spooky's been playing it. It's only new. It's only about a month old anyway. But the tune he made the tune about two years ago. Right. But 
it's an advanced tune, do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's alright, it's, it's a good tune. So is there any uh, plans to release the back catalogue as well, like or, uh, digital or anything yeah, like that? So, yeah, yeah, we're going to we're gonna do something like that. I, do you want to answer a lot? <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> yeah? think there will now. I think a lot of the old grime stuff, particularly like of that era, yeah. it's not available digitally. Like I go back, I'll, anything that I see from that time, yeah. I buy it again. Oh yeah? Yeah, because oh, my records are getting copy. battered and that. So oh, I'd rather have, quality. Yeah, I'd rather have a WAV or an MP3, oh, WAV, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Nice. So yeah, everything's picking up. You got the label kickstarting again. Yeah. It's all yeah. looking. It's all looking good, mate. Just want to get good. some more bookings abroad. That would do me. Yeah. <laughs> get some sunshine. Yeah. Well, we've got some sunshine in London at the minute. Yeah. Luckily. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. You might be able to get a bit more abroad. Yeah. Mate, thanks very much for coming down and having That's a chat right, with mate. us. And uh, good luck. And uh, looking forward to seeing everything. All the Slim's off bits coming back out. Isn't it? Cool. Big, Big up, up rinse. Big up you as well. Big up rinse. Symphonic creation flow like river to the sea